Both sides on those very questions right now with Gary Wheeler from the Alberta and Northwest Territories Division of the MS Society. Brendan Lear is a clinical ethicist at the U of A's John Dossiter Health Ethics Centre. And in Regina, Saskatchewan Health Minister Don McMorris. Welcome to Alberta Primetime, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We did extend an invitation to Alberta Health and Wellness as well as Alberta Health Services. Both decided to wait until more data is available before speaking out on this. Just yesterday, the Alberta government announced it will form a committee now to look into this controversial procedure. Just very quickly, Gary, uh, huge frustration, I would imagine, up until just this very latest bit of news from the Alberta government. How frustrating has it been? Frustrating. It's been a great challenge because people are hearing through social media of the benefits of a untried, relatively untried uh, and they're uh, procedure. They are desperate, and uh, we we don't promote any one particular uh, therapy or any one particular procedure. So we have not been able really to provide people with anything other than information with regard to some of the uh, difficulties and problems associated yeah, with this. Heartbreaking. It is. Well, let's set up a little bit more of this discussion right now with a personal look at a Calgary woman's experience with this controversial new treatment, her account from Alberta Prime Time's Chad Carrier now. It's been almost five years since Ginger McQueen has been able to ride her bicycle. Just so alien to be able to be outside and I never thought I would get it back. Now the bike represents freedom for Ginger, who has been held captive by multiple sclerosis for 10 years. My walking became so bad, I really should have been using a cane, but again, my pride, I, I just I couldn't bear to use a cane, so I fell down a lot. I fell several times a day. Refusing to stay down, Ginger heard about a controversial procedure by Italian doctor Paolo Zamboni. At first, I was really skeptical extremely skeptical. I mean, I've, I've heard of treatments in the past, you know, the hyperbaric chamber, the snake venom, and we can't afford false hope. After several weeks of interviews and research, Ginger decided to go to Poland to have the procedure done in March of this year. She says five months later, her results have been nothing short of amazing. My heat intolerance is gone. Um, my bladder spasms have left. My balance has returned. I can ride my bicycle again. I've actually sold um, quite a few of my paintings online on eBay to help fund um, other people to go to the States and overseas to get the angioplasty. The trip and procedure cost McQueen $10,000, but the chance of possibly being relieved of symptoms was a price worth paying. I feel like I, I have hope. I feel like I can make positive plans for my future now. I feel like I don't have to think about um, euthanizing myself when I get worse. McQueen believes in the procedure and wants our government and those in the medical field to do the same. I'm not to say that this might be a cure, but this is something positive for the first time for all types of MS and, and they're stalling and they're hesitating. And, it doesn't make sense. Dramatic picture there of the suffering and the hope. We must stress this uh, treatment is not a proven cure for MS and Ginger McQueen's procedure was done in Poland but not by Paolo Zamboni who was pioneering this potential solution uh, out of Italy. Don McMorris, Saskatchewan's health minister, patients see varying results but the good ones give so much hope. Why are you, Saskatchewan's health minister, willing to throw tax dollars at what really is an experiment right now when Alberta is not? Well, here in Saskatchewan, led by Premier Brad Wall, we decided that we would uh, talk to the research community and see if they'd be susceptible to clinical trials here in Saskatchewan. When you look at uh, our prevalency uh, per, per capita, it's, it's very high, one of the highest in, in uh, the world. Uh, we thought it was very fitting. There are clinical trials being conducted down in the United States, none here in Canada. So we felt, uh, you know, I, although it's anecdotal, uh, many of these stories that come back from uh, overseas and the... Uh, and the improvements that people have seen, we thought it was, uh, it is worthwhile to challenge our research community to see if they were willing to take on clinical trials so that we could help prove, hopefully, 
or disprove uh, this liberation treatment. Astounding when you think that there are no trials going on in Canada. I don't know how many people knew that. Uh, Gary, how does the Alberta Northwest Territories Division of the M Multiple Sclerosis Society feel about the Alberta government's decision not to invest anything into at least investigating, researching this possible treatment at this point. What do you tell sufferers here? Well, I think what's important to recognize, in fact, the Alberta government is investing and is investing in developing a group right now, a, what we're calling a uh, connector committee right. of experts. And one of their uh, 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 things they'll be doing is to actually begin to address the question what evidence is there and so on and so forth at the same time uh, there is research going on um, in in Alberta uh, in Calgary for example um, that's been funded by the MS Society so some of the leading research that needs to be done the lead-in research that is mm -hmm. prior to the trials is already being done here so I think things are are beginning to happen but it's a committee uh, granted this is mm -hmm. good news and it's just come very recently this new government committee fact finders mm -hmm. it's another committee though do you do you worry about that no I don't I think this is really this for us is wonderful and we've been pushing for a long time to bring more awareness to the whole area of multiple sclerosis period so this committee apart from looking at CCSVI issues, we'll be looking at many other issues that are really pertinent to people with MS. Brendan, you're a clinical ethicist here. Tell us what is the answer in your mind? Is Alberta or have they been wrong to put the health budget ahead of the quest for a potential treatment or right to be hesitant, be prudent, be savvy with tax dollars? Well, I, I, I think this is a balance. It, it, we spend, you know, millions and millions of dollars in, in Alberta every year doing research. And when, when, when you have a, a, a limited pot of money, uh, and you have to, you know, uh, that that's public money. The the burden is on the the government and Alberta Health Services to adjudicate that in a just way. And that means, uh, and that means, you know, g giving uh, money to proven researchers, giving money to research that there is evidence behind, and so on and so forth. Because but you could just these, chase ghosts. Exactly. There are always these these uh, outlying uh, the the these outlying sort of anecdotal uh, uh, anecdotal treatments. Uh, that there are not one or two or three of, but m many, 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 many. Right. So, and the question is, how do you how do you decide if you're going to invest, like the Saskatchewan government has? Because how people do you in Alberta are ones? convinced. Yeah. MS sufferers are convinced. Absolutely, absolutely. And we can give lots of different examples of uh, of this. I, mean, I see it in the, in the hospital every day. Mm -hmm. You know, people saying, "Well, I'm going to take my child to go to Mexico to do this yeah. and this and this." Uh, and so, the, 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 you know, I think I think there's enough evidence with th this particular treatment there's a very a very clear thesis there's a narrowing of vein, venous passages sure. that cause this uh, and there are a number of very very clear things you can do in an early clinical trial such as measurements using diagnostic imaging that actually don't cost very much money and the question is how do you is it is it a proportionate use of of money and are you going to be able to get a clear answer to the question and i think the answer in in this case is yes and i've commended the Saskatchewan government for not doing the knee-jerk thing saying okay we'll fund this to those people who want this but saying we'll fund a clinical trial to go about this in a very clear fashion and at the end of that we'll have an answer for both people who are, are looking to do this and also people who have been naysayers. Here is the Alberta government's official stance. At this time, it is only a hypothesis that CCSVI, that's the procedure, uh, which the long form of that is chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, that CCSVI contributes to or causes multiple sclerosis and that venous angioplasty is clinically beneficial. So just a hypothesis. Further, independent and controlled studies are required to prove dis count or better understand Dr. Zamboni, the pioneer in this treatment, uh, his, his results. The nature and frequency of the risks on venous angioplasty are not yet fully understood without a clear indication that venous angioplasty carries a clinical benefit that outweighs the risk. It cannot yet be supported as a standard practice. 